the season finale of season two of Dark Side of the Ring was about the final days of Owen Hart. And in this documentary, you're going to see Owen's wife, Martha, his son, Oge, and his daughter, Athena. I think this is the first time we've really seen the kids talk about this. Um, I've seen Martha Hart do interviews before, but I think this is the first time we see uh, his children speak. We start off with footage of how Dark Side of the Ring, they shoot uh, revision footage of the Blue Blazer, and wow, that gimmick. If he's not the Blue Blazer, he's still alive. Chris Jericho, Jim Cornette, D'Lo Brown, Jim Ross, we all see them praising Owen Hart as this documentary starts. Then we meet his wife and his son. We see the Over the Edge footage, and man, oh, that just it's like a punch in the gut whenever you see it again. I rarely ever watch it, but it hits you hard. We see a reaction from D'Lo Brown and then the Godfather, who I believe was scheduled to wrestle the Blue Blazer Owen Hart. And I think Owen was going to win the Intercontinental title that night, pretty sure. We see the Martha Hart clip saying, she says, there will be a day of reckoning. And this is my final promise to Owen. The title says, the final days of Owen Hart. And we hear the Hart family singing happy birthday to Stu Hart. Stu Hart had a dozen kids and all the boys became wrestlers and all the girls he had grew, uh, went on to marry wrestlers. We see them, uh, the Hurts, the sons uh, become stars and of course Bert him and Hurt, one of the biggest stars in the business. Um, I don't think you're going to see Brett here. Um, he did the Montreal Screwjob one last season. He did well there, but I think there was something that happened on that episode. I think uh, he didn't like that Scott Hall was interviewed, so he's probably mad at the Dark side of the ring, guys, and we're not going to get Brett here. It's disappointing because Brett would have been very insightful here, but we're not going to have Brett. Owen was the youngest brother to get involved in the business. We meet Martha Hart, who is now Dr. Martha Hart. She works as a doctor for the University of Calgary in the Children's Hospital. She's the founder of the Owen Hart Foundation, and she's the mother of two kids who she had with Owen. She explained how Owen, who was a great wrestler, wanted more of a normal life. He wanted a regular job. He wanted to be a dad. He wanted to be at home with his kids more. We saw a really sad video. Um, it shows uh, Martha videotaping Owen. It looks like in a mall holding his son, Oge. We meet Oge Hart, who says he liked his childhood. It was phenomenal. Oge, as a kid, his favorite things were toy trains. We see uh, Owen and his kids. Looks like they're on the train or on uh, some sort of vacation. And he, uh, next actually, we meet the daughter, Athena. Athena, I think, was very young when Owen died, but she says it was uh, her thing when Owen would take them at the zoo, to the zoo. That's where that footage was. Owen is signed to WWE at 23 years old, and he is the Blue Blazers old gimmick in the 80s. Um, and he, of course, he would you know bring it back later, but this was an 80s gimmick. It did not belong in 1999. In 1993, the Blue Blazers phased out. And Owen uh, becomes, oh, you know, he's he enters a star where he's Brett's spoiled little brat. This uh, is his little brother, Brett's younger brother, who's a spoiled brat. And he turns on Brett. He turns heel. Their feud builds to a highly anticipated match at WrestleMania 10, which is Owen Hart's best match and the biggest win of his career. It was the opening match. It's still by far the best opening match to a WrestleMania. Arguably the best opening match ever. It was a classic matchup, just a great technical match, and Owen pins Bret Hart in the opening match, biggest win of his career by far, and what happens later on that show is uh, Bret would actually come back and win the, the main event against Yokozuna, he'd win the belt. Owen, after uh, the match at WrestleMania, he had, uh, they didn't talk about this, but he had that, actually I don't think that was his best match, the match was probably even better, it was a match of SummerSlam against Bret Hart and they steal cage for the belt. Owen didn't win that match, but that match probably was even better than the WrestleMania match. Um, he, of course, won the King of the Ring, I believe, that that, that year, 94. And uh, next I talk about, we see Martha talking about Owen's uh, schedule and he wasn't home as much. Next we get to 1997, and this is the Montreal Screwjob. You can see Owen talking to Brett after the match. You know, he's telling Brett... Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. And Owen thinks of wrestling differently than Brett does. You can see 
Um, Owen looks like someone who uh, he likes it, but it's more about family, and uh, he doesn't seem to take it nearly as seriously as Brett does. After um, Owen, he he signed to a new contract, and Jim Ross says it has a lot to do with the Montreal screw job. I don't know if they really get into it, but Owen wanted to go to WCW, uh, but he did not. Owen had trouble uh, finding uh, a role in this new Attitude Era because he was just a really great professional wrestler. He fit much better in the mid nineties, early to mid nineties, than uh, you know the the new generation, and of course this Attitude Era in which he really he, he's just a great wrestler. He's not this over the top personality. They wanted Owen Hart to do a storyline with Deborah because him and Jeff Jarrett were the tag team champions, I believe, in, uh, in 99. They even won a match at WrestleMania 15, I believe. Uh, and uh, Owen didn't want to do it. He pushed back. He didn't want to make it look like he was cheating on his wife on live TV. So Owen's upset about this, but they give him, he want to be the Blue Blazer again. He says, okay, I don't have to, it wasn't make me look like I'm uh, cheating on my wife. It's not going to upset my family. So he becomes the Blue Blazer once again in 1999. Um, and to say that maybe the Owen Hart, the, uh, the the wrestler, didn't have much of a place in the adversary, didn't really fit in, you can say that a million times more about the Blue Blazer. Part of the Blue Blazer was uh, they wanted to spoof Stink, who was a wrestler in WCW, and he would come down from the rafters. They wanted to uh, mock WCW, so they would have Owen do it, and he would be uh, a gimmick. It was basically almost uh, Gilbert. When they would bring him in to mock Goldberg. Not as much, but it was kind of similar. as like a knock on the Zuby would sting. We see Martha talking about how um, they would have the top uh, riggers to bring him down uh, from the uh, arena. Uh, the best ones from LA. And she was asked that she needed, they need to get Owen's vest. And they just decided to bring through the big drop in. And uh, this would lead to his death. On May 22nd, 1999, Owen travels to Kansas City for Over the Edge. Owen took his son Oge to the airport and he would have his uh, grandmother drive him home. And uh, after he leaves, he tells him, you take care of your mom. And that's the last words he told to Oge. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, take care of your mom and take care of your sister as uh, the man in the house. And uh, that's that's it. Next, we meet Jimmy Corderas, who was a former uh, WWE referee. And he was going to ref the Godfather Blue Blazer match. And he witnessed Owen's fall. The Godfather talked about talking to Owen Hart that day. They talked about the match. They talked about the finish. JR also talks to him and he can tell Owen's uncomfortable about doing the stunt. Owen would make his way to the top of the arena, the rafters, and then we hear uh, D'Lo Brown. He talks about uh, him and Mark Henry worked Kane and and uh, X-Pac for the tag team titles in the first matchup. And I think he says Owen was the third or fourth match scheduled. They, uh, uh, D'Lo says, uh, he remembers seeing Owen going up to the rafters. Um, then uh, we hear Jamie Corderas, he talks about having his left arm on the ring rope. Corderas is, he has his hand on the rope and he's kicking out, um, the trash that was in the ring from the hardcore match, I believe, before it. JR tells, uh, the story he was looking up on, down on his notes, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jerry Lawler, um, basically elbows him and says look up and he just catches Owen falling um, Jamie Corderas uh, while he's holding the rope he hears just this loud thud and then like the rope um, it like jerks back and like it, it uh, from his hand and he looks back what the hell was that and he sees Owen on the ground there's just shock JR's uh, just you know he's trying to kill time basically while Owen's in the ring um, taking his last breaths uh, the Godfather hurt. Uh, he's ready. He's ready to wrestle Owen because he's in Gorilla, and you know someone's yelling. Uh, Owen fell. Owen fell. No one knows what's going on. Uh, Cornette's shocked. Jerry Lawler is the one who comes back for the curtain. And he says, "White as a ghost," and he says, "I think he's dead." He says, "I I think he's dead," and they say, "Who?" And he says, "Owen." D'Lo Brown. Uh, he's still you know. Yeah, uh, he see, remembers them wheeling Owen through backstage, ready to go to the ambulance. The Godfather says, you know, he saw Owen. He was, he was blue, and that's that. Like almost when you turn purple, bluish, that that means you're probably gonna die. They had um, after that happened. They had Jeff Jarrett cut a promo with Deborah, and Jeff's in tears. And Jeff was really close to Owen, and oh, Owen was gonna do the storyline with Jeff and Deborah. It's oh, man, it's only if they would have just done that. 
Uh, Jeff's in tears. That was so so bad doing that. They had you can even see Kevin Kelly the interviewer shocked too. They had uh, Kevin Dunn talk to Jim Ross through the headset, and uh, Jim Ross does not know anything. Kevin Dunn tells Jim Ross he's dead, and you're back in ten, nine. JR has to tell everyone that Owen Hart has died, and that's oh man, just seeing that video again. Oh, yeah, I feel bad for him and uh, him and King right there. You can see just Jerry Lawler's. Oh, he's devastated. Um, this is uh, oh, the way this was handled was just terrible. You see Jim Cornette, and he's about to cry. He's oh man, him saying that almost got me. Uh, when Owen's falling, he's yelling, look out. He's telling, I think he's yelling that to Jimmy Cordero so he doesn't get crushed. Um, he's yelling that so, uh, you know, he knows he's done. He's falling 100 feet. He knows he's done. He's telling them, uh, you know, be careful, look out. He yells, look out to help other people while he's about to die. Vince McMahon calls Martha Hurt after the fall, and what happens is, when Martha sees it, she thinks it's Owen because unknown caller. And uh, it says, this is Vince McMahon. She's, well, she says Owen first and it says, no, this is Vince McMahon. And, and Martha, because it's Owen, who's a prankster, she thinks, no, this is Owen messing around. And eventually Vince says, no, it's me. And he has to tell her that there's been an accident and Owen has fell. And she wants to know an update and he does not know the information. Eventually, she is set up with the doctor who calls her the next call. And uh, when Martha says this, she has to take a pause, and it's uh, it's horrible. Um, what happens is the doctor tells her that, uh, are you alone, and you should fly out to hear this news. And uh, she asks him, you know, what happened. He goes on and on. He's telling her uh, about all the details, and eventually she says, get to the end. And he says... I tried to save his life, but your husband has died. So Oja's memory of May 23rd is he is in his basement with his one neighbor. She says, your mom's crying. I don't know why your mom's crying, but she's crying a lot. Oja goes upstairs and his mother is screaming. Uh, She's crying. What am I going to do? And what Martha thinks to herself is all I can do is... I have to, I can't let this destroy everything we've built. And she's obviously thinking about Oj and Athena, her two kids. It's heartbreaking. Athena is three, Oj is seven. Martha is able to uh, take uh, her two kids to bed, Oj and Athena. They sit in the, the edge of the bed and she tells them, She said, Your dad's dead. He fell. He died, but he did not feel any pain. That night, all three of them slept in the same bed. Oj looks at the roof and he can hear his mom sniffling and crying. Martha and her family make final funeral preparations. And as uh, Owen's body is transported to Calgary, the director opens the door and she sees Owen's body in a casket. And she's just horrified of how Owen, of what Owen looked like. She screams loud. She tries to run away, but Brett is there, and Brett Hart bear hugs her. She was just horrified of what Owen had looked like, and she sees him. Um, she sees his hair, and that's kind of gave her comfort because his hair looked the exact same, and that was what just gave her, you know, that's the person she loved. On May thirty first, nineteen ninety nine, Owen Hart is laid to rest. You see people out there. Um, There was a thousand people at his funeral. Um, There was all of these Canadians who loved them in Calgary. They were there. It's like, you know, the head of the state died. Um, They were all there. They were all outside. Um, And we see Martha's speech, and she says, I'm a forgiving person, and I'm not bitter or angry, but there will be a day of reckoning. And this is my final promise to Owen. Martha Hart promises to get to the bottom of this, and she says she will have her day of reckoning. Her Owen's funeral, his widow Martha travels to Kansas City to try to piece together the events of Owen's death. Uh, Martha and Owen, I think they both went up on the catwalk. And Athena too, the daughter. Owen needed to get his... uh, off that little catwalk to get to the place he needed to be. 
They walk literally to the spot right at the top of the arena. They see distance between where they are and the ground and he went out, you know, we can't even imagine the kind of fear he would have been fear having in those last few minutes, last few seconds. It's it's crazy, like how does he just fall from the top of the arena? Something must have gone wrong because he's done this before. The Kansas City Police brings everything to Martha and her kids. Everything's all on the table. She has the clip that held Owen. I can't believe that. I, oh, what the fuck happened? Like, what the... Like, oh, my God. I can't believe that happened to Owen Hart. The thing Martha's showing, it's a clip that holds him. It can hold up to six pounds. It's meant to release. When someone... When you wear it, um, it's meant to be released. It's, like, meant to offshore... Uh, Docks, that's the whole point. Uh, I think uh, boats or something like that. The whole point is, you know, it clicks. It clicks open once you have um, more than six pounds. Owen Hart's like, what, 240 pounds or something? Or 230 pounds? I don't even know his weight. What the hell? Like, how does that, how did that happen? Like, how could they set that up? Oh, fuck, dude. It's designed to let mass, a mass down on a sailboat. It's insane. I can't believe that WF did that. That is the lowest thing. Like, that's like a clip. It's what a six pound clip. That like how the hell did that happen? I mean, why why didn't they just use the same company they did before? Like that fucking company should. Oh man. Owen was approached by the riggers to rehearse the stunt before the event. He they asked him to do rehearsal. And he said, "No, it's okay. I got it." They told him it's a different setup. They believe it was the locking carabiner that he, he eventually did practice it and it was a locking carabiner and it worked. It was designed to save like two seconds of a setup. They, want, they thought it looked bad, you know, the way he would come down. It was like, oh, it's ridiculous. It was this negligence. Um, it's insane. It's insane how this happened. It's ridiculous that this they, they allowed it to happen. I don't know how he did it before. I guess he did it the original way or something. It's, oh, man. Of course, they filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the WWF. The family is torn. Some of them are for the lawsuit, some aren't. Vince is the most powerful man in wrestling. Um, It's a situation where Vince, he sues Martha after this. He sues the widow of Owen Hart. There was Hart family members who were not happy with the lawsuit. Some say it's done, but others worked against her. They stole her legal documents. They gave it to the defense, which is just, just unforgivable. The neglect to go over something so catastrophic cannot be overlooked, as Oge said. This was a 240-pound guy. They could have had a rigging team who knew what they were doing, and they did not do it because they were too expensive. They had to reach a settlement for $18 million after the trial was settled or after a year later. We see Owen Hart, um, where he's buried. Um, Owen James Hart, May 7th, 1965 to May 23rd, 1999. Our family chain is broken, and nothing feels the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will be linked again. I agree with Jim Cornette. The fact that they didn't stop Kansas City was just bullshit. It was disturbing. Um, They scraped Owen off the mat, and they send wrestlers to wrestle in places where Owen's blood is. You see uh, the police photo. I don't know if that's Owen's blood um, on the ring. Because I think there was something with the brood on the... Uh, something that he shows something that's on Owen's blood. But you can see blood red spots. That could have been Owen. Actually, yeah, you do see some of his blood. And he even broke some of the boards on his fall. And there's even a dent in the middle of the ring. Oh, wow. Now we see Owen's blood. Uh, that That's definitely his blood. Yeah, his blood's all in, all in the ring. Um, oh, my God. Oh, Oh, that's that really hurts seeing that. Even with Vince, the police should have shut down the show. It's just uh, it's a horrible tragedy. In '99, you know they were gonna bring in after that after his fall, they were gonna bring in a whole bunch of great technical wrestlers in the year 2000. You know the Radicals, as Jericho's explained, Jericho, Kurt Angle, Edge Christian. They would have had a resurgence because there have been so many guys from our heart to work with. I think Jim Cornette puts it uh, best. Uh, he should be in every Hall of Fame, but he's not in the Hall of Fame because his wife does not want him celebrated by the same company that took him away from her. Martha says she'll never allow Owen to be recognized by a company that's responsible for his death. Oge says uh, he doesn't want Owen to be in the Hall of Fame. I understand why there would be Hall of Fame. Um, and they're really, you know, I, that, that, after you hear that, you know, it's after Martha's gone, Oge does not want him uh, in the Hall of Fame. Um, 
Next, we hear from Athena. We see Athena saying, you know, if he never went into wrestling, he would have done something else. They would have all been together. Well, we hear that at the end, um, Ode says, happy trails, and I would have liked to have you around. We see Owen saying Merry Christmas in those videos. Oh, that breaks your heart. Oj is a lawyer. Athena is a journalism uh, student. She's approaching that. It ends, uh, you know, it ends almost on... They, they have some positivity with their own Heart Foundation. It's really tough. Uh, the, the kids seeing them broke... Oj, you know, get, broke your heart. Um, it's really hurt on them. But uh, they did do good things with his name with the own Heart Foundation. That was really well done. It was very sad. It's very emotional. I thought I saw it. That was just really, really well done. That's the best Dark Side of the Ring episode. It was. I think even better than the Benoit one. The Benoit one, it, it hurts. It's it's a different feeling, but both are very sad. I don't know. Man, you can pick either one of those uh, those two. But um, yeah, this was uh, this was really well done. It's very sad. And this is the anniversary, uh, close to the anniversary of his death in uh, 1999 it's been 21 years I did a video last year you can check that out about a 20 year anniversary of his death you can watch that if you'd like um, rest in peace Owen Hart